Eleanor has a background in retail and food. After building her career at Retail Group ECA for almost 15 years, she now serves as Chief Commercial Officer of the Musty Group since 2018. Musty is the largest pet retail group in Finland, Sweden and Norway, with 308 stores and a large online operation. Hello, I'm Eleanor Prashtotter Nilsson, the Chief Commercial Officer here at Musty Group. I have 15 years of retail experience, both from the retailer side, but also from the supplier side. I've worked with Nordic and European grocery, developing assortment, categories, offerings, and store concepts. Here at Musti, I'm responsible for the category and sourcing, the marketing department, and also our store concept department. I'm very happy to have your attention and to present the Musti Group and future trends for you here at the Global Pets. So who is Musti? We are the Nordic market leader when it comes to pet care specialists. We have a 24% market share and we're 10 times bigger than the other pet specialty retailers in the Nordic. Uh, one of the reasons why we're so successful is that over 93% of our staff are pet parents themselves, meaning that we can give really good and relevant customer advice. Uh, our sales is divided both by store sales and omni sales, and we have a 24% online share of sales, and this is complemented by the 308 stores that we have across the Nordics. One of the keys to our success is data. We have 1.3 million loyal customers in our uh, customer clubs, meaning that we have a unique platform of data where we can target our customers with really relevant offers and content for them, but also meaning that we know a lot about pets in the Nordics and pet parents. Our product portfolio is uh, spread over a wide area of product categories, food being the largest. In the product portfolio, over 50% of our sales is, un is under our own and exclusive brands, meaning that we can offer an assortment that no one else in the Nordics can. Our range of 13,000 SKUs is divided in the category type and type of pet, food being the largest category. And food is important because it drives frequency and loyalty. Something else that drives loyalty is own and exclusive brands. And I'm happy to say that over 50% of what we sell is under those brands. Also making sure that we have a unique assortment for the Nordic pet parents. We realized the potential in data a few years back, and we now have 1.3 million customers in our loyalty clubs across the Nordics. Something that we're developing currently is the Musti ecosystem. We want to make sure that Nordic pet parents feel that all they need is Musti. We're there for every step of the way. We have loyalty clubs, including puppy and kitten VIP clubs. We have breeder clubs. This is, of course, a complemented by the offering that we have, the premium pet food, the curated accessories uh, that you can buy in our convenient stores or with fast deliveries when you shop online. Then something we're developing is our services. We're expanding the pet spas that we have. We're offering both digital and physical training. We have vet care services and insurances, making sure that all you need is, is musty. One strong trend that we see is developing outdoor gear that is tailored for the Nordic weather conditions. And when I say the Nordics, think about the darkness and think about wet weather. Up here, it needs to be reflective, it needs to be durable, and it needs to be waterproof. So these are some things that is very important when we develop our assortment. Another important trend that we see is, of course, the puppy and kitten boom. This is very visible here, as it is in the rest of the world. During the summer months, we, for example, can see over 35% more registered puppies in our loyal clubs than the, the last summer. Uh, and this is really visible when it comes to the type of products that we need to develop. It's the activation that is growing, the functionality. And of course, also playing with pets, both outdoor and playing indoor. And when it comes to the, the trends, 
Here for the Nordic, it needs to be really suitable for the Nordic decor. That means not so bright colors, it means clean lines and pastel colors, really matching the homes that we have here in the Nordics. So thank you for listening. I hope it got across that we at Musti want to be a warm and welcoming place where pets can be pets and where pet parents can get support and guidance through the ups and downs in life with pets. Um, in your um, uh, video, you mentioned that the online turnover is approximately 24% of the total turnover of the Musti group. Um, what do you expect for the years to come? Will that grow? Will that be the same? Can you tell a little bit more about that? Uh, well, we already many years ago kind of acknowledged the digital growth in the arena. And um, as you see from the figures, we are growing in both the channels and we expect that that will continue in that way. Uh, we definitely see that our customers that go online, they also visit our physical stores. Uh, so we believe this will you know, continue and we really want to be channel agnostic, meaning having this seamless experience where you can go and you can you know, shop online or uh, do our digital services online and also go to our physical stores. Um, okay. And um, how do you, uh, let's say, maintain the relationship with consumers who are shopping online and are coming less in the shop? So how do you interact with consumers on both channels? A, a good question. And I think uh, for us, the core of the, the Musti brand is really that we're very knowledgeable. Uh, you know, we're inspiring when you come to our stores and, and many of our uh, employees, over 93% of our employees are pet parents themselves. So we really know like in the physical meeting with a customer that it's in, important to kind of share that knowledge and guide them in their pet parenting. And of course, that's a crucial part when meeting a customer online. We need to have really good uh, content, inspiring content. In addition, have a very seamless online shopping experience, meaning fast deliveries, you know, click and collect, order in store. You really need to get your parcel, you know, when you need it, wherever you need it. Yeah. And, and I think that's been part of the success and we will continue developing that and we will also continue developing our, our digital services online, really bringing the physical uh, store experience online. Okay. Um, what is the relation with this approach towards your ecosystem? And you mentioned in your video that, that you are working with an ecosystem. Yes. Uh, what is the relation between that and the ecosystem? Well, what we call the system today already contains a lot of different parts. It's the physical stores. As, as I said, it's the, the online uh, stores that we have, the whole Omni experience. In addition to that, we have a very strong loyalty program and we have a loyalty program uh, for puppy and kittens, a VIP program. We have breeder clubs. We already have um, a large suite of different services. We offer insurances, et cetera. But the next thing that we see is that we want to enhance the digital platform. Uh, so we, we will uh, launch a series of different digital services, as I said, kind of bringing this store experience online. Uh, and it will be a part of live shopping where we can really engage with the customers in a more entertaining way. Uh, we will also offer something that we call master classes. And yeah. master classes is more like in depth um, training. It could yeah. be about nutrition, it can be about uh, uh, behavioral. So, so, more like in depth bringing that online. And we will also offer something that we call book an expert, where yeah. you as the customer can really book. Uh, a private session with one of the most experts deep diving into the area where you need guidance and help. Um, assuming hey, that your ecosystem will expand over the years, what will be the impact of that on the layout of the shops? Well, the physical store is constantly you know, evolving and of course, of course also like the, the floor itself. But I would say this is more of uh, the type of information that we give in store yeah. 
in the in-store communication. Uh, for the smaller store formats, we already today have really good information about that you can find a wider selection online, uh, that there are many different types of delivery options. You can have it delivered to your store or to your home or click and collect, etc. And I would say, of course, we need to make sure that customers know about all the digital services that we have also when you visit the physical store. Um, you mentioned in your film also something about uh, product development and uh, how important it is that your product development fits in the winter conditions in the Nordics. Um, I also like to ask you, how is sustainability integrated in product development? Yeah, sustainability is something that we, you know, it's always been in the DNA uh, of, of Musti. And I think yeah. being a front runner in, in, in any business today, you have to have sustainability, you know, for, first on your agenda. I mean, it is something that you need to have because you're, you're a responsible company, but it's also something that our customers are really demanding uh, from us. And when we talk about sustainability, yes, you can talk about the products themselves. They need to be durable. They need to be long lasting. Um, that's of course important for the product life cycle and the environmental impact of the, uh, of the products. Uh, but you also need to be sustainable in the way that you run uh, your business. Yeah. And we have, we have an approach that we call uh, trusty, where yeah. all of the different sustainability, you know, the, the whole sustainability agenda is under the trusty approach. And there we have three different themes where we categorize everything that we do. And it's for pets and their parents. It's for the employees, because that's also very important, being a sustainable business yeah. today. Yeah. And then uh, it's for the communities, bringing back to the better good of society. And there we have a lot of different collaborationships as well. Okay. I would say sustainability is, you know, an on ongoing part of our business. Uh, nowadays, uh, actually due to COVID, um, we are facing in supply chain all kinds of challenges. Uh, the, the containers who are not uh, moving so fast around the world. Uh, we are faced with increasing prices of raw materials, uh, this type of things. Uh, how is that uh, influencing your sourcing uh, policy? I would say when it comes to sourcing, and this goes, of course, worldwide, the most important thing for us is to you know, do a full commercial evaluation, meaning that, you know, <laughs> choosing the, the products that we want to sell and also choosing suppliers that we want to work with long term. Yeah. And I really think in a situation that we're in right now, I mean, this long term strategy approach is something that you have to hold on to, you know, more more than ever. So to say to get like real reliability in in the um, supply chain. So we still stand with that. And if we talk about uh, Asian uh, suppliers, for example, we have a partner that we work with at uh, a China office yeah. uh, that are helping us uh, locally in, in Asia to establish this really deep collaborationships. If you look at to, to, to Asia, uh, but also if you look to your sustainability approach, does that mean that you are considering uh, for looking around for more local suppliers? So that you are sourcing more close by? Most of what we sell uh, today, I mean, really the large majority of what we sell uh, today comes from, from, I mean, really like Nor Nordic or European suppliers. Yeah. And, um, and the share of sales, of what we saw source from the Far East is rather, you know, uh, minor in that yeah. uh, sense. Uh, so I said, I mean, I, we will continue on this strategy. We see that customers are, are looking for products that are locally produced or European yeah. produced, and those we will continue um, sourcing from, from Europe. But then we also see uh, some products, you know, that we, we see we need to source uh, from other origins, and we will continue doing that. Since when and, and how became sustainability high on the agenda? And... With that, it is integrated in your DNA. Can you can you tell a little bit more about that, how it started and where it is today? I'm really proud to say that the Musti Group was the first pet specialty retailer to commit to the UN Global Compact. And this was back already in 2013. And of course, since then, uh, we have you know been working with suppliers that commit 
uh, to what's in the UN Global Compact. We're also part okay. of uh, Amphori BSEI, and all of our suppliers in risk country must be audited and approved by BSEI. Um, you know, which is a really good platform for us, for us to stand on. So we can really say that we have the high quality products that are safe, uh, both for, for pets and their parents, yeah. and that they're sustainably, you know, produced under all the laws and regulations that are out there. Okay, now thank you so much for all your contributions.